Glory, glory, glory. Glory, hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb, holy Jesus. Worthy is the Lamb, holy Jesus. Glory, glory, glory. Glory, hallelujah. Worthy is the Lamb, holy Jesus. So worthy is the Lamb, holy Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. Are you Lord God Almighty? Worthy is the Lamb, holy Jesus. So worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, so worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus, so worthy is the Lamb. Holy Jesus. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Glory, glory, glory to the Lord God Almighty. Good morning, kingdom citizens. How are you all doing? I pray and hope that you woke up with the praise and worship on your heart, mind, and soul for the Lord. Ready to conquer and be victorious in this day. Amen. This is Dive into the Word. A daily Bible reading where we are getting through the words of God every day. Y'all don't know this, but... I literally just hopped out of bed. <laughs> like literally just hopped out of bed. All right, so let's pray. Heavenly Father, Jehovah God, creative heaven and earth, Abba Father, we come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. We glorify you and we thank you, Lord God, for everything that you are doing in our lives, Lord Jesus. We thank you that you woke us up this morning. And that you have a plan and you have a purpose for us in this day, Lord God. And we just glorify you and we thank you, Lord Jesus, for your healing hands, your healing spirit, and your healing power, Lord God. We thank you that you are keeping us. We thank you that you are making ways out of no way. And we just glorify you. Excuse me. And we give you all glory, honor, and thanks. And we just pray this in the presence of Jehovah and the spirit of Jesus, Yahweh. In Jesus' holy, mighty name. Amen. Ooh, glory, glory, glory. I am doing some writing. So we are in Psalms this morning. This is Testimony Friday. So I hope y'all have some testimonies. Definitely, um, definitely we all can say that the Lord God woke us up this morning. That is that is the ultimate uh testimony right there. We can all say he has woke us up this morning, put food on our table, clothes on our back. But I hope y'all have some testimonies of, of, you know, increase and in prosperity and, and things like that of, of, of the goodness of the Lord God Almighty. And then, of course, today. We will be looking up some words. We will be looking up some words that we came across um, uh, in the reading during the week. And then we'll be reading out of Kay Arthur's book, How to Study Your Bible, um, this morning. So, all right, so let's do Psalms 22. And if I seem a little um, off this morning, I'm telling you, I literally just hopped out of bed, like for real. 
So I'm still trying to wake up. It may not look like it, but I'm I'm literally trying to wake up. All right, so Psalms 22. Says, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. Oh, my God, I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. And then the night season and am not silent. Says, but thou art holy. O thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel, our fathers trusted in thee, they trusted and thou didst deliver them. They cried unto thee and were delivered. They trusted in thee and were not confounded. But I am a worm and no man, a reproach of men and despise of the people. All they that see me laugh me to scorn. They shoot out the lip, they shake the head, saying, he trusted on the Lord that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighted in him. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. I was cast upon thee from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. Be not far from me, for trouble is near, for there is none to help. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Bashan have beset me round. They gaped upon me with their mouths as a ravening and a roaring lion. I am poured out like water and all my bones are out of joint. My heart is like wax. It is melted in the midst of my bowels. My strength is dried up like a potsherd. And my tongue cleaveth to my jaws, and thou hast brought me into the dust of death. For dogs have compassed me, the assembly of the wicked have enclosed me, they pierce my hands and my feet. Wow, um, I had to pause right there because... Even though, um, see, who is this? Says it's a Psalm of David. So in the commentary to pierce his hands and feet, it says. It means to bind or to dig. Digging could be up. But it sounds like the same thing that it's getting they 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 do to Jesus, right? So I guess um Okay, yeah. So it's saying it's a prophetic allusion to Christ's crucifixion. Cause that's what I was I was just thinking as I as I just read that I was just thinking of the crucifixion of Christ that that could be like a, a prophecy of you know Jesus Christ that 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 part just made me kind of stop and pause for a second okay so sixteen uh, no seventeen it says I may tell all my bones they look and stare upon me. They part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. But be not thou far from me, O Lord. O my strength, hast thee to help me. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Save me from the lion's mouth, for thou hast heard me from the horns of the unicorns. So to me, to me, this is like a prophecy of 
of um, Jesus Christ because even even Jesus um, says the same thing on the cross. Um, um, doesn't he say the same thing? My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? He says the same exact words um, when he's on the cross. So this is like, like, you know, this is a Psalm of David. But it's like he's all it's almost like he he had he's he's going through the the same feelings and, and things like that and going through um like prophesying what what's gonna happen with Jesus and like how Jesus feels. That's what I'm seeing reading this. All right, so 22, verse 22, I will declare thy name unto my brethren in the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him, all ye, the seed of Jacob, glorify him and fear him, all ye, the seed of Israel, for he hath not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither hath he hid his face from him, but when he cried unto him, he heard my praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. The meek shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord that seek him. Your heart shall live forever. All the ends of the world shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. For the kingdom is the Lord's and he is the governor among the nations all they that be fat upon earth shall eat and worship all they that go down to the dust shall bow before him and and none can keep alive his own soul a seed shall serve him it shall be accounted to the lord for a generation they shall come and shall declare his righteousness unto a people that shall be born that he hath done this. Yeah, that that's that sounds like um the prophecy of Jesus. Any comments? Now y'all have to forgive me because yesterday uh, there was comments being made yesterday. I don't know what was going on with the internet. Um, but there was comments being made and it was not popping up, not on my phone or my desktop. So I have no idea. Um, they've been doing a lot of upgrading and changing things. And so the internet was messed up yesterday. But still make comments because I was able to see the comments after the live feed yesterday and I was able to read them. So any comments on that Psalms? Which definitely sounds. And, and I didn't recognize that before that it, it definitely reads um, as. Uh, a prophecy of of Jesus Christ so any comments any comments for Psalms 22 if not, we'll go on to Psalms 23. And like I said, if I seem like I'm just whew, out of it, because I just woke up. Oh, you you just popping in to acknowledge the observation. Okay. All right, yeah, so we just read we just read Psalms 22 and it definitely sounds like um 
the prophecy of of Jesus Christ because especially where you know it says um they're piercing they're piercing my hands and feet and they part my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture uh they do all the they do all those things to Jesus Christ And 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 remember, we 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 talked about David before. David David prayed prayers as if he was in our in our present day. You know, when David when David prayed prayers, the way D- David felt and the way um David the things that David were going through, the way he prayed, the wordings, the way he put the prayers together, it's almost as if these prayers would be set throughout time. So it's like, I'm sure a hundred years ago when they was praying, when they was reading these prayers a hundred years ago, it was like, it was set in that time. So it's like the way David prayed, no matter what, it was set in the present, whatever was going on. So most 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 of david's prayers um most of david's prayers uh seem like they were set in the present if that makes any sense so when 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 it came to when it came to uh you know jesus christ coming and Jesus Christ having to go through the crucifixion and things like that and when people pray when people would read this it's like it was set in that present time. When we read it, it's like it's set in our present time. And that's the way David, that's what I love about Psalms because it's like he hits our very core of our feelings, exactly what we're feeling and what we're going through at the very moment that we're reading the, you know, the Psalms. So that's that's what makes, that's what makes David's prayers um, so profounding to me because like I can go no matter what I'm feeling for the day, no matter what I'm going through, I could go into Psalms and, and begin to read. And, and it's like, he, he knows exactly what I'm feeling at that moment, you know? And so, um, that's what I love about David's, David's prayers, um, or his Psalms. That's what I love about them. All right. So good morning, Kingdom Citizens. If you are just coming on, we are in Psalms, uh, getting ready to do Psalms 23. And of course, this is this is a this is a Psalms that everyone knows and everyone reads. Says the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. Amen. I've actually, I've actually been uh, reading this one pretty much every day um, for the past week. I've been reading this one. And verse six, you pretty much want to declare and decree and claim that. Verse six, you, you want to say that like every day. It'll, 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 it'll give you hope to be able to keep pushing forward. You know, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. 
You know, you want to declare and decree that because, you know, um, and like I said, they, David, David knew exactly what to say. And, and you, you want to know, you want to know at all times where you are, where your position is in Christ Jesus, you know, just like staying aware, staying aware, staying awake, being ready. You want to know in here, I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, I will dwell in the house of the Lord. And so you want to say that because in here, you need to know, you need to know that you need to have that confidence. You need to, uh, that that's confidence you can walk in confidence in Christ Jesus knowing that your name is written in the lamb's book of life because when evil do approach you won't fear because you know who you are and where you're going to end up when when things come against you and and it seems like there's chaos all over it, it it will not trouble you because you know who you are and where you're going to end up. You know, when you when you have that confidence in you, in your heart, nothing, nothing will be able to come and make you waver. Nothing will be able to come and make you get weary. Nothing will be able to come. No storms will be able to come and beat you up so much. To where you want to give up because you have that confidence. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And, and, and you're able to stand and be able to say that because, you know, you know that you've done everything that God has told you to do. You obey his voice. You listen to his command. You, you let him write it on the tablets of your heart. You have done, you have done the changes throughout life. Like you can walk in that confidence to know my name is written in the Lamb's book of life. And, and, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You know, it says in the word that Jesus becomes your confidence and you can walk in that. Glory, glory, glory. All right. So any comments on Psalms 23? Any comments, any questions? Anyone going through anything that we need to pray about? You know, because we all we all have to recognize, even though we walk through the valley of the shadow of death, we will fear no evil and we can do this together. Right. So any prayer requests, any any questions. All right, so let's do Psalms 24. All right, Psalms 24, the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, the world and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord or who shall stand in his holy place? He that hath clean hands and a pure heart who hath not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. He shall receive the blessing from the Lord and righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob, Selah. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors. And the king of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. 
Even lift them up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? The Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Selah. So again, that that is also just pretty much saying what I just said. So it's he's saying, who will be able to stand in the house of the Lord? Who will be able to stand in the holy place? Those who have clean hands and a pure heart, who have not lifted up their soul into vanity, nor sworn deceitfully. So when you when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he comes in and he cleanses, he cleanses, he purifies your heart. He purges out those things that should not be there. And, and so, you know, when you allow the Lord God to come in and transform you and, and, and allow yourself to go through the transitions, then you're able to. And and, that, and that's what I said the other day, like Jesus Christ comes and literally prepares your body, your spiritual, your spiritual body in order to be able to stand. And it's like he is taking you through. What they what Moses and, and, and the children of Israel had to go through when they go through the tabernacle, it's like that's what Jesus is. That's what Jesus does. You know, he cleanses, he purges, he purifies, he sanctifies you, he redeems you to be able to stand in the house of the Lord. And that's why I was saying he he becomes your confidence. He becomes, and that's why it says, lift up your heads. You you know, you no longer have to walk around with your head hanging down low anymore. You know, you no longer have to uh have fear or be afraid. Of, of the surroundings of, of things that are around you because Jesus covers you. He clothed you in the right clothing. He clothed you in the right clothing. He covers you with the blood of Christ and you're able to hold your head up and stand before the father. Amen. Glory, glory, glory. Any comments? Excuse me. Any comments? Any comments? All right, so we just got through reading Kingdom Citizens. If you're just coming on, we read Psalms 22, 23, and 24. And so, of course, on Fridays, we do things a little bit different. We look up words that we have come across um, in the reading uh, in, the, in, the, in this week. And then we are reading from K. Arthur's book, How to Study Your Bible. So we're going to we're going to look up some words. Now, some of these words that um, I wrote down is when we was reading about the making of Aaron's clothes um, in Exodus. When 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 God had when God gave them the blueprints of what the clothes are to be then um okay so the first word is ouches ouches so of course um we know ouch ouch to be pain and everything. So I'm going to look in the Bible dictionary. I'm going to look in the Bible dictionary um, for ouches. 
Um, it says settings for gems, sockets, with the work of an engraver in stone, like the engravings of a signet. Um, See, shout thou engrave the two stones with the names of the children of Israel. So this is in Exodus. Um, it says the secondary meaning of this now archaic word is the gold or silver setting of a precious stone. Stone. So I guess the way it sits, the way it sits on the clothes. It says in Exodus it occurs eight times. They use the word eight times. In Exodus, um, it says it is clear that the gold settings of the engraved stones forming the breastplate of the high priest are intended. So I guess where the stones sit in ouches. Because um, if I if I look up the word ouches in, in the other dictionaries, it's going to talk about pain. Now, how how we get that word as a definition of pain, and then there's the word for stones. I don't know how we ended up <laughs> with the two different. Maybe, maybe, maybe while they're wearing it, it hurt. I don't know. <laughs> But we ended up um we ended up coming up with these very different meanings. Okay, um I'm looking I'm looking at a one uh where it says a brooch or clasp for fastening a, a piece of clothing together, especially when valuable or set with jewels. And so that's a definition that came about around 1485. For 14, year 1485. That's very interesting. So ouches. That's, 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 that's a very interesting, um, word for stone or the setting of a stone all right so the next word we're looking up is and i hope i'm saying this word right habergate ha habergian now these are words we definitely do not use anymore for sure um especially when it comes to clothing so these are the words that we found in Exodus when it comes to uh, Aaron's clothing. So, and I guess it's Habergian. Hey, hey, Habergian. I think that's the right way. Right way you say it. Habergian. A sleeveless coat of male which is spelled M-A-I-L or scale armor. So in the Webster Dictionary, um, in the Webster Dictionary, it says a medieval jacket of mail, M-A-I-L, shorter than a hauberk. So I guess... Um, if you ever if you ever seen like medieval medieval attire the way that the way um i guess those um like sleeve no it, it has no sleeves so it kind of sits like a jacket that oops i got out of that hold on So that was a, that was the Webster dictionary. Dictionary.com says a light sleeveless coat of 
male, M-A-I-L, worn in the 14th century under the plated hauberk. Hauberk. And and it makes me want to know what 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 the coat of a male M A I L because we know male to be like letters and and things that come in the mail. The English language is very confusing sometimes because you know they they're using. And even when you look up this word mail, it's about letters and packages and delivery of. So I don't understand how that <laughs> how that word uh, pertains to um, a medieval jacket. But anyways. All right. So Mitre. We're going to look up Mitre. Now, if y'all have any comments, any comments, definitely say them. So I'm not really seeing a actual, and I'm definitely saying the word wrong. Uh, my, 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 martyr is saying martyr, but hold on. I'm not seeing an actual definition for this word. Okay. So in in the Wikipedia, we I have to look at the Wikipedia for this one for this word. It, it is is a type of headgear known as the traditional ceremonial headdress of bishops and certain abbots in traditional Christianity. So I guess that that thing um I, we i had the picture in the bible showing his clothing so aaron had to have this thing that's on his head and uh and then they had to put this this plate uh on it that said um that had some wording on it so it's a headgear that they and you definitely don't see any you don't see any I don't I don't see any priests wearing this headgear ever definitely not in America they don't they don't wear this so of course of course these are words that we don't use and and things we don't we don't use anymore at all all right so heave Heave is a word that was in Exodus when it comes to a heave offering. It was an offering that they had to do called heave offering. So let's see. It says the verb for heave is lift or haul a heavy thing with great effort. Um, Produce a sigh. Um, rise and fall rhythmically or spasmodically. Okay, that's a word I've never seen before. Um, the noun for the word heave, an act of heaving, especially a strong pull, a sideways displacement in a fault, or a case of retching or vomiting. Oh, okay. So pulling something heavy. So they had to do a heave offering sometimes. So I guess pulling something heavy. Um, hmm. That's interesting. To haul a heavy thing with great effort.
Well, that's interesting. Oh, excuse me. So the last word will be oblation. And, and, and this word was used when it was talking about food, when it was talking about the food, when they were eating um, certain things. Um, it, so it says a thing presented or offered to God. And then the Webster dictionary says the act of making a religious offering, something offered in worship or devotion, a holy gift offered usually at an altar or shrine. And so that's definitely a word we do not use anymore or at all. And uh, oblation, ablation, oblation is, is, is the word, oblation. Good morning, good morning, Kingdom Citizens. Um, right now, we're just looking up definitions of words that we came across um, in, the, um, in Exodus we had uh, just read, uh, we finished off Exodus. And so I wrote some of these words down and I just looked up the last word, oblation, I, oblation, um, which is the act of making an offering um, to God. And so um, if you are just coming on, we read Psalms 22, 23 and 24. And so on Fridays, um, uh, so Beverly says we use it in the Methodist church during co communion services. Okay. Oblation, oblation. Like, you know, I've never heard of any of these words unless. Yeah, the word obla oblation. Ablation. I'm looking at the way it's telling me to pronounce it right here. And it's abla ablation. <laughs> yes. And what about that headgear that, 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 that Aaron had to wear? Like, has anybody ever seen anyone having to wear that? Um, in, in our time, in our lifetime, have you seen anyone? I don't even think if you uh, if you see the. Ooh, me, I don't even think if you see the Hebrew priests or anything like that or 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 or, or the Jewish priests or anything. I don't I don't I haven't seen anyone um, wearing that on their head anymore. All right, so those are some interesting words that we found in the Old Testament in Exodus to look up. Those are very, very interesting. Um, and so uh, let's move on to K. Arthur's How to Study Your Bible. So, so if you don't know, Fridays are a little bit different. We read. Fridays were always in Psalms. And so we read our Psalm, we read Psalms 22, 23, and 24. And then we look up words because we're learning how to be able to break down um, the words of God, how to be able to study the Bible. And so, uh, so one of the things that we're learning to do is look, look up words and on Friday, we look those words up and, and then we're reading how to study your Bible uh, and, and learning, learning how to be able to not just read the word, but actually study it. Um, Beverly says, I think they still wear this headgear in the traditional Jewish services. Sometimes you see them 
in the news, especially the conservative Jewish sex. Okay. That's interesting. And do they actually have the breastplate and everything like they have that thing in the, in the breastplate that goes across their forehead? <laughs> I, I think I think the attire the 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 um attire that Aaron had to wear was is 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 actually very beautiful, um, very interesting. I'm gonna actually find that picture that they have in my Bible of what his attire looks like. And show it to y'all again what we're talking about. So this is this is the clothing that Aaron um uh, had to wear. And I guess um that Hab Habergian, the Habergian, we just looked it up, and I guess that's this thing right here. So it's a sleeveless a sleeveless uh jacket or coat or whatever that they wear because see it has no sleeves and this is the match may tray i guess i'm saying the word wrong but this is the headgear that we're talking about and there's that breastplate that they have to wear across the the forehead and so this is the clothes that Aaron had to wear in order to go into the holy place. This is what he had to wear. I think it actually looks kind of cool. So um So that's that that's very interesting. I think it's actually kind of cool. So that that that's what we that's what th those that's where those words came from that that we that we just looked up those words um when it came to Aaron's clothes. All right, so we already know that we've we've been learning when it comes to studying the word to observe observation, which is discover what it says, interpretation, discover what it means. An application, how it works. Discover how it works. And then we read, then we read that we want to pay attention to context. We want to, we want to read. And so, uh, we read some principles. We read principle one and principle two. Principle one is prayer. You definitely, when you get into the word and you want to study the word, we because we're, we're, we're learning that we, we don't want to just read the word. We want to study the word and really observe, interpret, and apply. We want to observe, interpret, and apply the word. So the first principle we read last week was prayer. We want to pray. Because we want the Holy Spirit to allow us, allow the Holy Spirit to teach you. The Holy Spirit is the teacher. Uh, even Jesus Christ says, I send the comforter and the teacher. When I go, I send the comforter and the teacher. So you want the Holy Spirit to teach you. So prayer is the first principle. And then the second principle we read last week was identify the context. So you want to be able to identify the context. So we're going to read uh, principle three. Observe the obvious. So principle three. Observe the obvious. Says when you observe the text. Begin by looking for things that are obvious. In other words, things that are easy to see. Facts about people, places, and events 
always capture our attention. Therefore, people, places, and events are easy to see since these kinds of facts are often repeated. This also makes them easy to see. If you keep your focus on the obvious, you will discover significant or repeated ideas. This will in turn show you the context of the book, chapter, passage, or verse you are studying. So for example, if you decide to put together a rectangular jigsaw puzzle, where do you start? Which piece pieces do you look for first? The four corners, of course. Why? Because they are obvious. There are only four of them, and they are easy to find because they have two straight lines. Once you identify the four corners, what do you look for next? Naturally, you look for the next most obvious things, the straight edges. Once again, they're the easiest pieces to find because each has one straight side. And this is really true. Like when we're putting together uh, uh, them them little pe puzzle pieces, we that's exactly actually what we do. It says by the time you have connected the straight edges, you have an outline or framework within which to put the other pieces together. You have established the context for the puzzle by looking for the obvious. In a similar fashion, looking for the obvious facts, details, or ideas establishes the framework in studying a book, chapter, or passage of the Bible. So to put together a framework for the text, begin with the things that are obvious in that book. As you observe the text, and discover the context, however you must always. So that, that is, that is, um, that is some good, you know, uh, teaching. So principle number one, pray. You always want to pray when you're getting into the word. And that's why, like, when we come on, we pray first. And, and and there's times where I even I even say, you know, Holy Spirit, Lord, increase us in knowledge, wisdom and understanding as we read your word. So you always want to pray before you actually really go into the study of the word and then identify the context and observe the obvious. Now, there's two more principles um, that we that we're gonna read, but I'm gonna break those down into the Fridays. So look forward to next Friday. We'll read the fourth principle. Um, but if you haven't got if you haven't got this book yet, go ahead and get Kate Arthur's How to Study Your Bible, and then that way you can also follow along and and read along. Uh, you know, on Fridays. On Fridays, we actually break it down and uh, break down the word, look up words. So any comments, any, any comments, what, what do y'all think, what, what is going on in your mind? You know, looking up these words make me think differently of the English language, like, because some of some of these words we don't even really use anymore and um and it's like and then and then we've come up with all these different definitions for a word you know looking up these words kind of really opened my mind um to to the complexity of the english language <laughs> So any comments, any comments? So ever since we've been reading out of the book, how to study your Bible are, are, is everyone, um, who've, who've been coming on every morning, uh, 
Are you learning to observe, interpret, and apply the word? Like, is is it is it is it helping you to see what the word is saying to you as you read it? Um, to to learn to observe, interpret, and apply. Um, let me let me know. It's it's really helping me reading that book, um, how to study your Bible. Um, it's really, really helping me. And I've actually been uh, observing a lot of, of a lot of things. What you say, Beverly, like things pop up, pop up. We're reading the word and, 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 and things that we didn't notice before. We're noticing in the word. We're actually seeing them and things like that. So is is anyone is anyone. Like, have, have your eyes been open to be able to observe, interpret, and apply? Talk to me. Talk to me. Let me know. When you read the word now, it's like, you know, very different, you know. Especially after you've gone through it, you know, one time. And then when you go through it a second time and then a third time and a fourth time, it's it's very, very different. No one has anything to say. Absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. All right. Well, that has been the reading of the word this morning. Any testimonies? Any testimonies of the goodness of the Lord God? Anyone have anything to say about what God has been doing in your life? Um I want I want to if, if if Tony if Tony can Kennedy is still on here I want to congratulate congratulate you brother pastor you are pastor <laughs> um I want to congratulate you on starting your um Bible study on Wednesday nights um I I really enjoyed uh this past Wednesday um you you really know how to observe, interpret, and apply the word. I can I can say I can say that. <laughs> so I want to congratulate you. Uh, you really do know how to observe, apply, and inter. Uh, no, observe, interpret, and apply the word. So I was I was very enlightened um, with your Bible study, and. Um, so I did. I did want to ask. Uh, see how you say it. Tri triumphal, triumphal Christian Fellowship. So is that the, the new name of your church that you are starting? Because I know last time you talked about restarting a new church, church house, a new church. Um, of course. We are the church, but you're starting a new uh church house. Is that is that is that the name that you came up with, Triumphal Christian Fellowship? I wanted to ask you that. I think I think it's really, really awesome. Yes, that's the name. Awesome. Awesome. So congratulations, congratulations on that move. Is progress awesome? So if if any of you would like to um he's he started Wednesday night Bible studies. So, you know, of course, I'm I'm early early in the morning, but if you want to uh follow him Wednesday night Bible studies, then I am actually going to type in hold on. Oh, there it is. I'm going to put it in where you can actually click on. 
click on that link and follow follow his page, Triumphal Christian Fellowship. Click on that. There you go, right there. Click you you should be able to click on that and it should take you to his page. Go and like his page. Go and like um the Triumphal Christian Fellowship page and follow uh follow his Wednesday night Bible studies. The Lord had me read 2 Corinthians 2.14 out of the ESV is where the name came from. Okay. Awesome. That is really, really awesome. So everybody, you know, uh, I don't, I don't know if y'all, uh, I don't know if y'all ever look at any of my live videos or anything like that, but I love, I love putting people in the spotlight (laughs) because I, I truly, truly believe in supporting and lifting up others and, and things like that. And I'm, I'm really, really excited for Tony, uh, Kennedy. I'm really excited for him. Um, uh, and, and I pray, I pray for each and every one I pray for each and every one of you every single day. And uh, I pray for progress for each and every one of us. You said in 24 hours, we had 1000 views of the first Bible study. on Awesome. That is a blessing. That is awesome. And, and I actually... Because we uh we just got through reading that part because you read out of Exodus. I forgot which exactly which exactly which scriptures, but you read out of Exodus where they came to the uh bitter waters and how God told Moses um to put that tree into the bitter waters and the, the 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 your observation and your interpretation and application of the word uh when it came to that specific those specific scriptures was was very 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 awesome oh you did <laughs> well i i'm i'm definitely not uh, you told many people about me awesome <laughs> Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Um, I appreciate it. I don't know if I'm ready for a thousand views yet. Um, (laughs) That would kind of intimidate me a little bit. Um, But I truly, truly appreciate it. You know, because I do this a lot. All that yawning. And uh, because the oxygen to my brain, like it just, I'm I'm even feeling the pressures like right now. But um, yeah, I'm not ready for a thousand views yet. I, I know one day, one day, one day, God, God is going. I'll I'll be ready. I'll be ready for a thousand soon. I just don't know when. <laughs> but um, but yeah. I, I really enjoyed that Bible study. I really did. And um, so congratulations. I wanted to congratulate that. Congratulate you on that. That that is awesome. I love progress. You know, I love seeing I love seeing the hands of God working in other people's lives. Of course, in my life, too. You know, I love seeing, you know, the presence of the father you know, making moves and doing things for us, you know, in other people's lives. I love seeing that. So, all right. Any, any other comments? There's no testimonies. Any testimonies? All right. So if you're just coming on, good morning. Good morning, Kingdom Citizens. Um, You'll have to go back and watch the replay. We did read Psalms 22, 23 and 24. 
And then there are some words that we looked up the definitions of um, that we read out of Exodus um, in the past, in this, you know, past week. And then we read out of K. Arthur's book, How to Study Your Bible. And so we are reading about some principles that we should apply when it comes to studying the word. So not only am I taking you into just reading the word, now we're going to learn to study the word. Okay, so share, invite we uh let everyone you know that we come on every morning at 5 30 in the morning um to read the words of god and on friday we're actually breaking down how to study the bible and it's 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 exciting enlightening i mean the growth the maturity that you will develop when you stay in the word is is awesome and phenomenal so share and invite and you know that i love you love you all i really really do and uh you all have a wonderful awesome beautiful blessed day on purpose and i will see you 5 30 in the morning <laughs>